All right, welcome back, everybody. And we are going to do a review on this tomato right here. And this is called the Smiley Worms tomato. And this is very similar to the Aurora, Aurora tomato or Aurora tomato. Very similar. They look the same, except that tomato variety is a very small plant type variety. Whereas this variety here gets very large and it produces hundreds upon hundreds of tomatoes or dozens upon dozens of tomatoes. But hundreds, if you grow on like five or six plants, yeah, you'll get a, a, an absolute ton of them. So. Let me just back you out a little bit. And so this tomato gets a got a bad reputation because it supposedly has the look of a um, male phallic, if you will. That's supposedly what people say. And uh, if you look at it really close, it kind of has that end that does kind of look like a male phallic. And that's why they named it Smiley Worms. They didn't want to name it anything else from what I understand, so they gave it the name Smiley Worms. But it's actually quite a gorgeous tomato and um, nice and long. These can get rather big. Now, I have I have some of them on there that are probably, uh, if you were to go in length, it'd be like, if you look at the end of my finger here, I would say it'd probably be about that long. So they do get a lot longer than what I have here. They do get longer and they can get a little fatter, but uh, let's let's uh, slice one open for you just to show you what it looks like on the inside. So it appears that it's probably a hollow type tomato. Okay, that's what it looks like on the inside more of a hollow tomato than anything. It doesn't look like it's actually touching the rind, but then again it does. Sorry. Alright, let's see the other side. Let's throw these on a scale and get an idea of the weight. Let's turn that scale on. Let it zero. Let me throw on this big boy right here. Okay, 2.3 ounces. That's one of the larger ones. Here's a much larger one. 2.2. Uh, that one was actually heavier. 1.6. Here's some of the smaller ones. A lot of these were laying on the ground, too. I let them just ripen on the table. So they didn't really... They didn't mature on a plant. These are maturing on a plant. This one fell on the ground, but it was already starting to mature on the plant. So it fell. Uh, as we get to a certain size, they just start dropping. All right, so you get an idea of the weight. And so let's go over there and do a bricks. When I say, when I go like that, let's go over there. It's just me walking around, guys. I got to go to the other side of the table and get my, my bricks meter. But here we go. Squeeze a little juice. Ooh. We got some juice coming out of that one. Okay, 5.5 on the bricks. It's not bad. It's a little above average. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. And uh, let's give that a go. Alright, so let's start off with the sweetness. Sweetness was very slightly above average, but it wasn't bad. So we're going to place that sweetness at about a 26, 27 on sweetness. Again, it wasn't just a sugary type of sweetness. It was just a sweetness that balances that flavor between the tangy and the sweetness. That sweetness needs to be there so the tanginess doesn't get bitter. So without the sweetness, the, the tanginess starts to get a bitter aftertaste to it. So that sweetness is needed for that reason. But it's not a sweetness like sugary type sweetness, just so I'm clear on that. It was a sweetness that was there that balanced out that tangy flavor. It was very, very nice. So it was a little above average. We'll say 26, 27 about on the uh, sweetness. Well, the tangy was just about the same. It was a little bit more. I'll probably put the tanginess at probably around maybe a 28, 29 on the tangy. It was slightly over that. It was that higher, that higher end uh, tanginess that was really nice. It really, really hits the back of the tongue very nicely. The aftertaste part of it is really sweet. I mean, uh, really tangy, but not bitter or anything like that. It was nice. It was a nice delivery of tangy. Tomato flavor was pretty prominent in this. I'm going to go with about a 7. When we're talking about tomato flavor, guys, we're talking about how prominent was that flavor in the tomato. Was it extremely prominent? Was it there a lot? Or was it barely in there? Can you barely taste the, the tomato flavor itself? And so that's what we're talking about. We're not talking, we're not 
talking about how good the flavor was. We're talking about how strong was that flavor in this tomato profile. And so we're going to put that at about a 7 on the tomato flavor because the flavor was pretty dominant. It was pretty pronounced and it was consistent all the way up to the point of aftertaste. So uh, it was a very enjoyable type of tomato and, and you can uh, get the full effect from the tomato flavor on it. So we're going to go to 7. I might even go a little higher uh, if I get some more of these that are ripen on a plant rather than falling on the ground. Uh, I might go a little higher because that's that uh, those starches will fully convert over to sugars on the plant. And so you saw, oftentimes you will get them a little bit on the uh, more sweeter side. That might affect the flavor. But as of right now, we're going to go with about a 7 on the uh, tomato flavor. Now, moisture was actually quite good. I was a little surprised. Uh, usually when seeds are detached from the rind, I get a, usually a dry effect from that. Uh, these were very moist. So it was actually very good. The uh, the flesh itself was actually holding the moisture until you chewed it, and it, it released all that moisture. So it wasn't like a sopping wet, soft, mushy type of a moisture. It was very consistent. The, the flesh and everything held together well, and when you chewed it, that's where the moisture came out. So with the moisture, we're going to go at about a 6.5. Uh, the sweet spot for moisture, the, the, the zone you want to be in, is between 6 and 6.5. That's where you really want to be with moisture. In this particular case, uh, this one is about a 6.5, so it's right in that sweet spot. When we're talking about moisture, that's the target zone for moisture. Now, uh, we're talking about tardy or sour flavor. Uh, it's very similar in effect. Tardy is a little bit different than sour. Sour tends to really, uh, even though it's lower in, in, in noticeability, it really targets the glands underneath your 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 jaw there's like glands over there and behind your jaw a little bit and it really affects that but we're not we're not talking about that we're talking about tardy so with the tardiness it was really no tardiness in there it was very smooth tomato very very smooth the, it, the, the tanginess really carried the whole tomato uh, all the way across so without without the tardiness though I do like a little bit of tardiness in tomatoes but this one didn't have it, so we're going to go with a zero on the tardiness. Undertones had no undertones. Uh, very, very classic, uh, almost commercial type flavor on this tomato, but it did not have any undertones to it. So we're going to go with a zero on the undertones. Uh, we're talking about production. It's actually a good producer. We're going to go above average on the production. I'm probably going to go with about maybe a six, a six point five on the production. It was quite. It's quite well. I mean, I got a bunch of them out there. It's just the, the only thing is this tomato variety really takes a long time to ripen. I mean, these tomatoes have been on there for over a month now, and they're still there. And, I'm, the you know, the stink bugs are starting to come in, and they're, they're starting to bite my tomatoes. And when they do that, they damage the tomato a little bit. But uh, other than that, I mean, I, I, they take a long time to ripen. At least these are. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I need to start this variety earlier so I can get that, that ripening effect in August rather than waiting all the way to September for it. But... I'm, I should have been getting a second crop from this, but unfortunately, uh, because they take so long to ripen, uh, I'm not. So I'm not going to rate it a low because of that, but production-wise, I will give it a good production rate because the amount of tomatoes it put out now is still a lot of tomatoes. So uh, production, we're going to go at about a 6 or 6.5. Somewhere in that range would be appropriate for uh, production. Now, we're talking about skins. How were the skins? How, now, when I talk about skins... I'm really uh, rating the skins based on how well they break up with the tomato. Uh, do they break up really well when you chew the tomato or are you left spinning pieces of skin out of your mouth because you're stuck to the roof of your mouth and sometimes the skins are so, so thin but very tough you can't even spit them out of your mouth. You really, literally got to stick your finger in your mouth and scrape the roof of your mouth to get that skin off of there because it just doesn't want to come off the roof of your mouth. It's like getting plastered to the roof of your mouth. Some skins are really annoying like that. And um, this tomato uh, did not have that effect. It broke up really nice and well with the rest of the... Uh, so skin-wise, we're going to go... I'd uh, probably say we'll go about a three, maybe even uh, three and a half. Five would be the highest. We'll say maybe three, three and a half on the skins. They broke up good. There was nothing left. Uh, I need to jump back to texture. I don't think I did texture here. Texture was actually surprisingly good. I thought it was going to be kind of on the dry side. But you could see here, um, it looks like it's kind of like almost dry a little bit. And there's not like dripping with water. You could see the walls in here. 
You know, you can see the walls inside are almost look dry, but when you chew that tomato, all the liquid comes out of it, and it's delicious when you eat it because it traps that flavor. And I'm not even referring to the seeds because I removed the seeds. I'm referring to the flesh itself really carried the, the moisture and a really good tomato flavor, just the flesh part of it. It was very delicious uh, flesh uh, on this tomato. So as far as texture goes, we're talking about texture as far as was it mushy? Was it like eating applesauce, really cakey applesauce, or was it like uh, nice and chewy and broke up and melted in your mouth type tomato? Was it chalky, dry, grainy, that type of stuff? Um, and so, no, it was none of those things. This tomato uh, actually had a very nice texture to it, even though it looks dry. It had a very nice texture, a very nice palatable effect. It was very pleasant in your mouth. So it, it melted in your mouth. It was a great tomato. Uh, Texture-wise, I'm probably going to put this up at about, I'd say uh, we'll put this texture up at about 7 to 7.5. It was that nice of a texture. It was very, very good. I was actually surprised for such a hollow tomato to actually produce such a great texture. Okay, as far as seeds go, I'm going to put this about average. Uh, I'm including seeds because some people buy tomatoes where they don't want a lot of seeds in their tomatoes and or they do want a lot of seeds because they want to save seeds or sell seeds or something like that. So that's why we're including seeds. So what I'm rating it on here is how seedy of a tomato it was. How much seed did the tomato have? Uh, this is going to be about average as you can see here. Uh, it, it's got your typical seed amount in here. It's not you know, terribly high or terribly low. So we're going to go middle of the road with seeds. We're going to put that one at about five on the uh, seeds. So uh, if you're looking to save seeds, it's probably a good variety for you to uh, grow and save seeds for. So how would I rate this tomato overall from 1 to 10, 1 obviously being the highest? I would rate this tomato actually quite high. I'm going to rate this at about a 2.5. And the reason why I'm rating that so high is because it, all the numbers here really worked out. And that tomato flavor and combination between the tangy, the moisture, and the sweet and flavor part, that part really came together very well at the point of when you started chewing it. That's where it really came together well. Now this is the kind of a tomato you could probably chop up really well, put it into a salad, it'll keep its, uh, it'll hold its body until you're ready to eat it or chew it and then it'll break up nice. It's not gonna turn to mush inside the salad. Uh, you could probably also turn this into a very, very nice tomato sauce, which is what I'm gonna do mostly because I gotta can these as sauce. Once I get the seeds out, I can them and that kind of a thing. So. It's a, uh, it's a great tomato, guys. This is a really fantastic tomato. And uh, I am going to grow it next year again somewhere probably around my yard. I'll let it grow wild and just really see how it does on its own. And hopefully we don't get attacked by stink bugs again. But uh, really keep this thing off on its own and really see what kind of tomatoes that come out of it. Again, this is what it looks like. It supposedly uh, looks like uh, you know what. That's why they say, you know. That's why they call it Smiley Worms, and uh, it's a very attractive tomato, all right? So what I'll do is I'll put whatever information I find in this tomato in the description and on my website so you can check it out either place, and I will leave a link in the description below where you can buy the seeds for this tomato. So uh, just look below. you find the link. Click it there. It'll bring you right to the page, and you can buy the seeds, all right? So that's really it, guys. That was my tomato review for the Smiley Worms tomato. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.